Big offense. We're both like now 50s, white 50s dads because we always. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the second installment of Tales from Catholic School. The first thing that appalled me about the place was that it was an all girls school because I hate females with fashion. I am a female, but like I generally <laughs> don't get along well with girls. I don't even get along well with myself. And then mm -hmm. I saw the uniform. The uniform was my first red flag, even though it was weird. I think it was pretty good as far as school uniforms go. That was one thing that actually didn't bug me. But the thing is, I came from like a school where we wore like really nice like rugby shirts and mm -hmm. pants and things were comfortable and it was just whatever. So going from that to like kilts and like knee high socks. There yes. were teachers who would literally measure the length of your skirt if they thought yeah, it was too yeah. short. The Lord does not appreciate your skirt no. right now. The Lord has a problem with your upper knee area. Yeah. Is what I gathered from that school. Yeah. And I, I and I'm 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 like very Christian. I'm not Catholic, but mm -hmm. I'm very Christian. And I just like I have my own qualms with the way that Catholic teachings are taught to children. Yeah. Just because I feel like there's not a lot like I, I think remember. it's so interesting. Like, yeah. I because a lot of people I know came out of that school very anti-religion, but I think it's interesting to hear the point of view of someone who is religious who just has a problem with the way it's taught. Yeah, because I mean, it's there's that distinction between problem with the religion itself and the way it's taught and the yeah. administration at that school. Yeah. So. Yeah. And not even just that school in general. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I've been to other Catholic schools. Some do it better than others. But I personally have an issue with Catholic pedagogy in, in, in the sense because I don't feel like a lot is taught. I feel like a lot of tradition is handed down, but what's traditional for one generation isn't going to be traditional for the next if they don't know why they're valuing it. So I feel like yeah. that's why a lot of like kids come out of Catholic schools or Catholic homes and they're like, what was that? Yeah. What, what, what even? I don't, I don't care. Because they have like no understanding of it. They just know that they should do a thing. And if you don't tell people why they should and... I think people are, should be allowed to like figure out why they should like something and figure out mm -hmm. if it means something to them. But if you don't give them the information, they're just like, this is useless to me. Yeah. I despise it. I feel like we're like the anti-Girl Defined right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. If you've ever seen the channel Girl Defined, they're like these two annoying peppy blonde girls who are like, we love Jesus so much. I feel like we're like the anti-them just sitting here like... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I definitely love Jesus very much, but I don't go around saying that like that. I yeah. feel like... I feel like there, there's there's a certain way to be a cool Jesus person. But, okay, but yeah. the most important thing is, were you there for Thank You, Jesus? I think so. Wait, wait, wait. Sister Maria Louise? Yes! Yes! <laughs> 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 I didn't remember that! <laughs> I didn't remember that! I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight! <laughs> Sister Maria Louise is gonna visit me in my dream! Hello, my old friend. No! Oh my god! What are what is going through your mind right now? Just nuns. Nuns <laughs> galore. I never understood how there were so many of them. In, like his in Pentecostal churches, you don't have nuns. You don't have random women in garbs. She was just an interesting entity. This woman. She was. And there was always on the announcements in the morning, a new nun had just died. They were all just dropping white flies. Yeah, so there was, I mentioned <laughs> this in my last Tales from Catholic School video, but there was a convent behind our school. Which is like, creepy enough. There was so like, that, you know. the field, and then, and then like, the sports field, and then you walk a little farther back, and there's like, some nuns, and they had like, a ton of property, and like, this forest, and an apple orchard. This the school was so, was cool. this school was so mythical, you don't yes. even... But yeah, there was one nun that actually worked at our school. She had this ritual where she would just get, like, the Eucharist, like, the, I forget, like, what's the big Eucharist called? There's, like, the little ones they give out, and there's, like, the big one that the priest eats or something. I think it's the Eucharist, and then this is the communion. Oh, okay. I mean, might be, I forget. But she would, like, t hold it up, or, like, there was, like, this metal, like, sun thing that, that was, you like, would a put case it in. for yeah. it that she would yeah. put it in sometimes, and she would just, like, hold it above her head. And like chant thank you Jesus and walk around the school and we were all required to like follow her in this giant procession of like schoolgirls following this creepy nun googling thank you Jesus thank you Jesus and we all had to like repeat it and that was um formative years they had like an honor an honor system 
library for like the remaining books that they did have and we would yeah. just pilfer whatever books we like. <laughs> awesome. I was like, this looks interesting. What was so interesting about that library is that a lot of the, because the school was open in like the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. I think, and they closed it down and it was abandoned for like quite a while. And then they, they like reopened it and revamped it in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then I started going there in 2009. So I was there from very much the beginning. You were only there for one year. She was a lifer. Yeah. She was a lifer. You were only there for one year. But a lot mm. of the books in that library had been left there just the entire time. So we found some like ridiculous like old stuff there. Yeah. We found like my favorite thing I ever borrowed, long term borrowed, long term, <laughs> was this textbook from 1991 about like how to use computers and it's the most obnoxiously 90s thing you've ever seen in your life. Hilarious. I'm gonna- wait, I need to- That's hilarious! Go find it. it! Grandpa socks. Have you ever seen socks? These great? <laughs> That's possession. beautiful! This is my prized possession. Even the art is very, very 90. Purple and it's like trying to make it look hip, funky, fresh. Yeah, it's like a- this like cyberpunk atrocity. There was something about it that was like- about that school that was like so mythical. Like yeah. this textbook is like- and like the whole like library full of like old ass books that nobody mm. knows where they came from. There's something very mythical about it, and that's how a lot of things at that school were. Yeah. Did we ever tell you the tale of the boiler room? You may have. Okay. So, like my we were volunteering at like an alumni gathering of some of the students who had gone there in like the eighties and nineties before. They brought a lot a lot of the alumni back for some kind of reunion, and we were volunteering as like serving food and stuff, and. First of all, another story that came out of that was there was a nun who was just really old and kind of going senile and like I was yeah. like serving cheese and there was like a little knife that people had to use to like cut the cheese and like mm. take a piece and this, this like old ass nun just runs away with my cheese knife and I'm like what do I- Why did she just take it? I don't, I don't know Why? how to tell this nun that she just took my cheese knife. I think we were in like seventh or eighth grade at this point and these alumni came up to a group of us and they were like so what do you guys do in the boiler room? And we were like- there's what? a boiler room? <laughs> and they were like, oh, you know, yeah, sure. You, like, it, it's okay. Like, we know. Like, <laughs> and we were like, no, like, what? What did you guys do in the boiler like, yeah. the boiler room? And they were like, oh, oh, you know. You got stuff and things. And things and stuff. They were just so, cr like, they wouldn't, I don't know if they were, like, trolling us. Yeah. Or, like, to this day, we have no idea what went down in the boiler room. A lot of things went down All those down years ago. Room. But... We made it our mission from that day on to find the boiler room. Did you ever find it? Yes. <laughs> Where was so, it? Like in the basement? Yes. That so makes sense. there was like three floors, three main floors, and then like a really small basement where there was like one classroom. And beside it, there was this room called the fan, it said fan room on the door. Mm. And we just decided to like lurk around one day. Yeah. And I think this, this might've been like 10th or 11th grade, which is why I'm surprised you don't know this. No, I think it was 10th grade. 10th grade. It was 10th grade. That makes sense. Because I was there for 11th. Yeah. yeah, just 11th. Because 10th grade was the first year that we occupied that little, like, teacher's lounge mm -hmm. closet room. There was, like, this tiny little closet room that was supposed to be a teacher's lounge that we overtook. It was where a little, like, troll hangout. And the teachers got, like, really concerned about students, like, doing illicit things in there. Illicit. Or, like, hiding out. Probably because it was me and... Redacted. Whose name I will edit out. <laughs> um, so... They took the door off, and the, like they the took the door. No, the the workroom. Really? Yeah, they took the door. Like they took it. Like I came to go hide in there one day. Yeah. And there was no door, and I was like, "What the hell?" And the vice principal like lurks up behind me, and she's like, "So I see you've noticed." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, no door. Yeah, what happened to my door? Notice. Like I'm trying to hide from you." And, like, all of the other terrifying people who work here. Oh, my... No, so they, like, took the door. And so... And then when my friend and I went to explore the fan room in the basement, we found the door. Like, we were looking around with, like, my phone flashlight through all oh of this. Oh, my goodness. They had so much old stuff that had just been left in the school. Like Christmas From stuff? a long-ass time ago. Like, no, like, super old computers, like, old technology, and just piles and piles of... Like, it looked like you were looking through your grandmother's basement after she died. Yeah. Like, it was a weird room. And it I was would huge. not be surprised if there was a grandmother, like, ghost somewhere. I would, like, yeah, I would not be afraid if there building. was, like, an actual human skeleton in there. Yeah, no. And it was a huge yeah. room. And yeah. we ended up finding the door, and we thought that was hilarious. But the point of the story is still the boiler room. So there was this door at the back of that room. Yeah. So there was, like, this huge, vast room 
that looks like your grandmother's basement, but it's gigantic and terrifying and completely dark, except for my phone flashlight. And there's this door at the back, and I, I don't know if it said boiler room on it or what, or if it was just a... A door. A door. I think it was just a door, and we were like, this door is probably locked. Like, this is a creepy door in a creepy room. It's probably locked. You should obviously go We're not going to be lucky enough to be able to get through this creepy door, but we open it. And there's this perfectly lit hallway. A hallway? Yes, there's a hallway, which is, at this point, it's getting so House of Leaves, we're, like, terrified and so into it. And there's doors lining the hallway. Door. We were like, they're going to be locked. There's no way we're going to be this lucky. The doors are going to be locked. They weren't. Some oh. of them were. Some of them were. But we got into one, and it was, like, another storage room full of, like, weird 90s shit. And we were like, this is This is so such good. an experience. Yeah. And oh my god. The final door at the end of the hallway was the boiler room, which was terrifying. There was like more stairs down. So we go down no! into like the Why pits of hell. This is this sounds like everything that you yeah. would not want to do because it's a Catholic we were dumb. school. It was me. Redacted. We were 15 though. It, is it just two of you? Yeah. That's even worse. So there's two people in a Catholic school, abandoned room. No one knows you're there. We end up like running through the boiler room and we get out a door at the other end of the boiler room, which mm. leads us up this flight of stairs. The one that was like near the cafeteria with the doors outside. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it, and there was, like, those creepy stairs down into the void, and nobody knew where they went. Mm -hmm. That's the exit to the boiler room. So we get out that way. We, like, sprint upstairs. Mm -hmm. We're, like, freaking out. Because we just had this, like, terrifying House of Leaves experience under our school. And we, like, sprint up. And, like, and our friends are, like, hanging out by the lockers. And we just, like, fall on the ground. And are like, guys! We this just, is huge! Yeah. We are, like, completely incoherent, and we're just like, guys, we need to show you something. Oh, did you, did they follow you? Yeah. So oh, we God. bring Leah and Ruby down, and <sighs> Leah chickened out by the time we got to, like, the storage room in the hallway. Because she's and smart. <laughs> <laughs> she's a little shit is what she is. She's oh, my God. She chickened out by the time we got to the second storage room, and she ended up turning around, which, I mean, technically she was a smart one, because what happened next... Like, we heard mm. weird voices, clearly. Was someone having sex down there? No. Oh. That's not <laughs> exciting. So we hear voices in the fan room, and we're in the storage room off the hallway. We turn all the lights off, as if, so, like, nobody can tell we're in there. Yeah. They come in to the hallway, and we're, like, in the dark, in the storage room, like, shitting our pants. Is the door closed? Yeah. Okay. So the door's closed, and we're, like, right behind it, and there's, like, all this light coming in from the hallway, and yeah. we're just, like, huddled in this dark short storage room, like, please, God, do not find us. And they're talking in the hallway, and we're just, like, I don't remember what they talked about, obviously, because we're, like... We're trying not to yeah. die and shit your pants. We're trying not to die and get in a ton of trouble. Mm -hmm. Redacted. They kept, like, trying to, like, tickle me or something, or, like, do something, making, like, faces at me. Like, she was trying to, like, stir some shit. She always was trying to stir some shit. I yeah. think she just was very bored with her life, mm. and she was just so used to, like, gingering authority and just getting in shit. Yeah. But, like, you were, like, a pretty, like, decent I had, like, a pretty with... straight-edge reputation. Exactly. Like, you were a even little if bit I edgy. Was totally up, like... Even I was totally up for some fuckery. <laughs> even though I had, like, a really straight-edge yeah. I think it was because I had good grades and I hung out with Leah and Sarah. Yeah. And people were like, yeah, she's a good people. Bee. People who were like actually had their heads put on, right? <laughs> yeah. They went back into the fan room and we like sprinted out through the boiler room. Like they heard us. Like the doors were like slammed. We were like, yeah. we slammed some doors. We were sprinting. Like they definitely heard us run out of there. <laughs> they didn't know who we were. Mm -hmm. But after that, they started locking in the fan room and we couldn't go explore there because they knew that people had been messing around yeah, down yeah. there. Yeah. So. Yeah, that wow. was a time. That's a that gnarly story. I think that was grade 10 that oh that happens. Goodness. Grade 11, I don't think a lot of the craziest stuff didn't happen the year that you no, were there. No, like, we were pretty mellow. Like, grade 11 mm -hmm. for me was, like, a pretty enlightening year with that, with, like, you guys. Like, because mm -hmm. you guys were just, like, she showed me some, like, really interesting books. Like, I, all that year, I just yeah. read and mm -hmm. read and read. Everyone who met me... And within our group who knew me, knew from like the moment I stepped foot in, everyone, I was like, I'm leaving. I can't stay more than a year yeah. yet here. I'm just going to live out the year. If I remember correctly, the school administration did question you about it at some point, right? Or made yeah. it difficult for you? Yeah, and I literally yeah. said to their face, I do not like it here. It sucks. You guys are so unorganized. And this has done terrible things for my grades. I walked into the lunchroom one day about to eat and then everyone was like huddled over books reading and I was like, what's going on? They're like, oh, we're studying for the religion exam. I'm like, there's a religion exam? They're like, yeah, in 20 minutes. And I was like, fuck. And I ate 
and I did the exam and I got like a 95. Yeah, because it's all bullshit. They teach yeah. you the same stuff in grade 11 religion that they do in grade 6 religion. No, actually, that year we were doing world religion, and so it was actually oh, kind true. of interesting. So I remember the book was like this super colorful book, and we learned about Taoism and like, um, Islam But not well. Not well, like, she, but like... The teacher this year literally gave us coloring sheets of like, yeah. Hindu gods. Yeah. And I was like, I refused to do it. I was like... What is Bitch, this? I haven't been given a coloring sheet since, like, elementary school. Yeah. Like, take this I mean, shit away. I like the fact that she was pretty, like, open and she was mellow and I didn't actually have to do any She work. was batshit. What are you talking about? Most, cl- my clearest memory of that teacher yeah. in world religions class was that there was, she was like, so, guys, what is the difference between Catholicism and Judaism? And people had to, like, raise their hands and, like, give examples. Yeah. And this one girl was like, well, um... In the Jewish tradition, they accept gay marriage, and, like, you're allowed to have, like, a religious gay wedding, and Catholics don't accept gay people, and the teacher goes, that's right, we don't. And I was like, well, oh boy! Defining moment was for me when someone came into the lunchroom, I forget who it was, and they were talking about someone in a younger grade who had asked one of the other, like, the general, like, um, religion teacher, they'd been like, um... So how do we know God exists or something like that? And then the answer was, he just does. He exists. Yeah. And I was like, this that's, is what that's is wrong like the most the logical. School. I don't even know what a better answer to that question would be because I had yeah. that drilled into me for so long. Yeah. And I mean, like, when I was younger, like, okay, so if I were to compare, like, the education religion-wise mm-hmm. um, that I got within Catholic school and within that school specifically versus, like, the religion that I'm from, I, I believe I'm Pentecostal, um, I would just say, like, if I ask questions, mm. like, sometimes they would point me to scripture because sometimes they were, like, difficult questions, mm. and they could only give me, like, their own experience of that, but sometimes they would just point me to scripture and be like, this is, like, what it is, you know what I mean? Like, I felt like there was a conversation going on, mm. there weren't really a lot of things that were shut down except if it was, like, disrespectful, so I felt like there was definitely a much more, like, constructive kind of conversation, so if I- That year was, like, the most, the best year for, like, the, the study room slash lunch room slash whatever. Yeah. We called it the workroom a lot, because yeah, I think yeah. that's what it was. It was The thing on the door said teacher workroom, mm-hmm. so I think that's why we called it that. But that room was, like, that a good, good, good was, place in grade yeah. 11. It was such a, it was, like, the only safe space. Remember there place. was a time that we, like, skipped out on, like, uh, an assembly or something? We all hid underneath we the We were desk. hiding under the desks in and there, yeah. And then they checked the room, they were looking for us, and then they left, we were like, yes, he could not find us. This is like, how bad the, like community exercises and like they call them yeah. chapel periods even yeah. though they weren't sometimes they were a mass but sometimes they were just like school community exercises or like spirit they were so stuff. yeah they were so incredibly mind-numbing that we hid under desks for like an hour yeah and then <laughs> we like go. talk to each other and like slide piece of paper across each other yeah like I, that workroom was kind of like it for me for that school. Like you had this little book where like if someone said something, you'd My write down yeah, your little quote book. You, she'd like do these really cool drawings in them. I have that also. Yes. Can we read some of the quotes? Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is like a regular decomposition book. This is two decomposition books that I Frank sewed together, together. The Franken book. Can you said. tell that I love to reference House of Leaves in like every aspect of my life? Because this. <laughs> what are some good ones? I couldn't get into med school, so instead I became a Colombian. <laughs> Time is a meaningless human construct, and we all die, whether it takes you one hour or 50 glorb florbs. When did I say this? <laughs> you owe the defendant one batch of pierogies? I don't remember. Simultaneously at the same time. They that laughed was, so hard that about was, that. That was apparently, a PSAT. That was a phrase on the PSAT in 2014, and they just would never let that go. Okay, yeah. so we had to go to um, this, like, retreat mm-hmm. in Camp Whatever. Wanakita. Camp Whatever. Camp Wanakita. Uh, oh, remember camp Wanakita. whenever anyone said campfires, all of the girls... This is how demonic. It, like, it literally <laughs> sounded like a cult. You would literally... And it's so creepy. Yeah, all these girls banded together. So I would say campfire. And it's like a log cam and everyone at the same time. Okay. Same tone, same tune. Campfire. Campfires. We well, love okay, the campfires. Was, we went to this camp oh and there God. was this, like, ke- peppy... Camp counselor. They're always on like the first night. They were like, "Okay, when I say campfires, everyone has to say campfires. We love campfires." And it was to get us hyped for like this campfire they were gonna have that night. Oh my god! And And it just continued on. It just turned into like this group joke where, for like the next two years, nobody could say the word campfire without the entire room doing that. And it was like like, so synchronized. I have no idea how this like inside joke between the entire school developed. 
literally, this is what it looked like to me. Everyone kind of just pricked up campfires, and I was like, what the fuck did I, think, I walk into? In that case, I think <laughs> it might have started in grade 10. I think so. people because, were already doing it when you got there. Yeah. Your dick will always, always have to play peekaboo. Okay, so, PBD. Remember PBD? PBD basically stands for peekaboo dick. And it was this joke that I made about kids who aren't circumcised. I was like, your dick will forever have to play peekaboo. And that is that. So I don't, don't know, ask me. I don't know about enough about dicks to confirm whether that's funny. I do. <laughs> you can't spell neurotic without erotic, which is almost true. Can we can, can we just like end the video like? <laughs> oh my god. I do want to mention your channel though. Oh. You're starting a channel. I've made the account. You've made the account. Yeah. I'm gonna link it in the description of this video anyway so that you can all go subscribe to her and see when she does post some fire fire content. I feel like we're like a good combination of like oil and vinegar. Why? Oil and vinegar is bomb. You should go home and mix that and drink it. It's good for you. Your hair and your follicles and stuff. <laughs> That's a false fact. Don't do it. If you do record it, I want to see it. I want to revel in your suffering. <laughs> Okay, I think that's sufficient. <laughs> I think we've seen it. I think everyone's seen enough. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again.